again. Hello friends, it's such a blessing to be back with you. And today we're going to be starting about what, Hannah? The Sabbath and the Wilderness Sanctuary. That's right, we're going to be talking about the Sabbath and the Wilderness Sanctuary. So today we're going to continue our study on the Wilderness Sanctuary talking about the construction of the Wilderness Sanctuary in connection with the Sabbath. Now we're going to see how the, even though the Wilderness Sanctuary was a very important and sacred building that even though God wanted it to be built in haste, it still was not to be done on the Sabbath. And we're going to learn how this applies to us and the importance and the sacredness of the Sabbath for us as 21st century Christians and how it relates to us in our walk and our relationship with the Godhead, that being our Heavenly Father, our Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And we actually have a question about building the sanctuary on the Sabbath, boys and girls. That's right, and we're going to see how even though the sanctuary was very important because it was the dwelling place for God to dwell in the midst of his people. And even though it was a sacred place, it must not be built during the times of the holy hours of the seventh day Sabbath. But before we continue our Bible study and get into details about what we're talking about, we're going to have Hannah, have a word of prayer for us. Would you please pray for us, Hannah? Okay, sure. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day as we're going to continue our study on the sanctuary and learning how the sanctuary is not supposed to be built on the Sabbath. Be it does and speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Hannah, for praying for us. So, Hannah, I have a question for you. Yes, Daddy, what's your question? What was the purpose of building the Wilderness Sanctuary? Hmm, that is a good question. What is the purpose of building the Wilderness Sanctuary? What is it, boys and girls? We're about to find out. Let's read Exodus chapter 25, verse 8, and see what that has to tell us. That's Exodus chapter 25, verse 8. And it says, And let them make me sanctuary that I may dwell among them. That's right. It says, Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. So the reason why that was the purpose is because God said, Let them make him a sanctuary that he may what? Dwell among his people. Yes, dwell among his people. So when God dwelt among his people, that means that the sanctuary was a sacred place, doesn't it? Yes. That's right, it sure does, Hannah and friends. But if God wasn't dwelling among his people, would the sanctuary be considered a sacred place or just another normal structure? It would be just a normal structure. That's right. So it's God's presence that made the sanctuary holy, right? Yes. That's correct. Good job, Hannah. So I have another question I'd like to ask you, Hannah. Yes, Daddy. What's your other question that you have for us? Who wrote the Ten Commandments? Was it God or was it Moses, friends, and Hannah? Hmm. That's a very interesting question. Glad you asked that, Daddy. Who wrote the Ten Commandments, boys and girls? Was it God or Moses? Well, we're about to find out. Let's read Exodus chapter 31, verses 18. So, Hannah, would you please read for us Exodus 31, 18? Sure. In Jesus' name. And when he had made an end of speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone, written with the finger of God. Oh, wow. So the Bible tells us that God wrote the Ten Commandments with his own finger, doesn't it? Yes, and just as it says, written with the finger of God, that means that God 
God literally did it with his own finger on the Ten Commandments. That's right. Very good explanation, Hannah. And because most of the times, some people think that it was Moses who wrote the Ten Commandments and it wasn't God. But really, how did God write the Ten Commandments, boys and girls? Well, he didn't use a pen, a marker, or a pencil. What did he use? He used his own finger, didn't he? Yes, he used his own finger. Now that's interesting. None of us could even do that. But God could. That's right. And see, friends, what this also teaches us, friends and Hannah, is that even though the Bible was written by men over a period of 1,500 years, the only thing that God did not allow man to do was write his law. You ever wonder why that was, Hannah? Why was it like that? Because God's law is just as sacred and holy as himself. And he would not entrust mortal man to write down his sacred holy law on the tables of stone that must be him and must be he himself that wrote it because his law is a transcript of his character and what God is like. Wow, that's very cool, Daddy. Yes, it is. Okay, and I have one more question for you. What's your last question that you have for us, Dad? Since the wilderness sanctuary was to be God's house, was it okay for the Israelites to continue building the sanctuary during the hours of the Sabbath? That's a very good question, Daddy, and I'm glad you asked that, because it wasn't supposed to be built on Sabbath, even though it was very important. You know why? Let's read Exodus chapter 31, verses 12 to 17, and see what it says. Daddy, I want you to read for us Exodus chapter 31, verses 12 to 17, please. Okay, sure, I can do that. Now, before we read Exodus 31, verses 12 to 17, I want us to notice something. God had told Moses and the children of Israel to build the sanctuary in haste. That meant to hurry up and get it done because he wanted to dwell among his people. God was anxious to be in the midst of his people. But notice what God told them when they decided that because it needed to be built so quickly that even though this was his dwelling place, the sanctuary, it must give way to rest on the holy seventh day Sabbath. Starting with verse 12, notice what the Bible tells us in Exodus 31. And look who's speaking here. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, so who is this speaking to the children of Israel? Is it Moses speaking to the children of Israel? Or is it God speaking to the children of Israel? It's God speaking to the children of Israel. That's right. It was God himself. Now verse 13, it says, Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep. It is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Verse 14 says, Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you, and everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work, which included building the wilderness sanctuary, friends, shall surely be put to death. And it says, For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep 
the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. Now, a perpetual covenant means forever. For as long as they live, as well as long as time shall endure. Now, before I continue reading, I've got a question I'd like to ask you, Hannah. Yes, Daddy? You know when, the, when God makes everything new and He makes the earth new? Will we still be keeping the seventh-day Sabbath and the earth made new? Yes, we will. Yes, we will. So we see how when God said it was a, per a perpetual covenant to the children of Israel, that He meant literally just that, forever. In this life and in the life to come on the earth made new, God's redeemed will be keeping the seventh-day Sabbath throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity as well, too. Isn't that a wonderful thought? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Now, let's continue with verse 17. Notice what else God says to the children of Israel. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. So what does this tell us, Hannah? That even though the sanctuary was a sacred place, that they must not what do what during the Sabbath? That they may not do the work for the sanctuary on the Sabbath. That's right. Even the constructing and the building of the sanctuary was to give place to the sacredness of the holy seventh-day Sabbath. So what this teaches us also, friends and Hannah, is that we may do whatever we want to do within the six days that God has permitted us. But on the seventh day, the Bible Sabbath, we must lay aside all secular activities, worldly pursuits, and work in everything. Anything that we did not get done before the Sabbath starts, we need to stop it and not continue it on into the Sabbath. We need to set it aside and wait until the Sabbath is over to continue whatever it was we were doing before the Sabbath started. Same way with the construction of the wilderness sanctuary. God commanded them, you shall not build the wilderness sanctuary during the hours of the Sabbath. The construction on the wilderness sanctuary must stop during the sacred hours of the Sabbath. Now, this is very important, isn't it, Hannah? Yes. Yes, it is. And I'd like to share with us a very important quote from the Review and Herald, October 28, 1902, paragraph 7, from the pen of God's messenger, Ellen G. White. Okay. So we're going to have Hannah read for us the quote that I was just talking about from Review and Herald, October 28, 1902, paragraph 7. And notice what the Lord's messenger, Ellen White, has to say to us about the importance of the sanctuary, but also how much more important it is to keep the Seventh-day Sabbath holy in connection with the construction of the wilderness sanctuary, friends. So, Hannah, if you would, please go ahead and read for us this. In Jesus' name. God directed that a tabernacle should be built where the Israelites during their wilderness journeying could worship him. Orders from heaven were given that this tabernacle should be built without delay because the sacredness of the work and the need for haste. Some argued that the work on the tabernacle should be carried forth on the Sabbath as well as on the order of the days of the week. Wow, did you notice what the Lord's messenger said? That orders from heaven were given that this tabernacle should be built without delay, and because of the sacredness of the work, the need for haste, some argued that the tabernacle should continue to be built during when? The Sabbath. That's right, during the hours of the Sabbath. But notice what Jesus said to the children of Israel. 
It says, Christ heard these suggestions and saw that the people were in great danger of being ensnared, friends in Hannah, by concluding that they would be justified in working on the Sabbath, that the tabernacle might be completed as quickly as possible. Wow, they didn't think there was anything wrong with it. And you know, friends, sometimes we think some of the things that we're doing, well, hey, you know, as part of the Lord's work, there's nothing wrong with doing this during the sacred hours of the Sabbath, but God is jealous for His holy seventh-day Sabbath. And even, again, remember, this was a sacred building. It was to be God's dwelling place where His presence would be among His people. He wouldn't allow it to be built during the hours of the Sabbath. And it goes on to say, the word came to them, Fairly my Sabbath shall ye keep. Though the work on the tabernacle must be carried forward with expediation, the Sabbath must not be employed as a working day. Did we hear that, friends and Hannah? The Sabbath must not be employed as a working day, which means that we should not seek to do our own pleasure think our own thoughts or speak our own words or want to go to work no matter what type of work we're doing we should keep the Sabbath holy there's no reason why we should do any type of work on God's holy Sabbath and it goes on to say even the work of the Lord's house must give way to the sacred observance of the Lord's rest day thus Jealous is God for the honor of his memorial creation. And again, that's from Review and Herald, October 28, 1902, paragraph 7. And written by Ellen White. That's right. It was written by the Lord's messenger, Ellen White. And so what does this teach us? That when every day for six days... But on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, those are the only days that we can work. But on Friday, when it's night time, we must know to put everything aside, our work, and worship God on Sabbath. That's right. And when, and when the Sabbath passes, then we will do the thing that we needed to do before the Sabbath starts. That's right. That is a very, very good conclusion Hannah, and a very good example and from our Bible study we can conclude that we have learned that though the sanctuary was to be built with haste and it was a sacred place because it was to be God's dwelling place among his people that he may dwell in the midst of his people it must still give way to the sacred hours of the Holy Sabbath. So friends, children and adults alike, whatever it is that you may be doing during the hours of the Sabbath that God doesn't want us to be doing, we'd like to encourage you to do what's right in God's sight because God is jealous for the sacredness of his holy Sabbath day. And when he said to cease from all worldly activity, cares, and labor, he meant just that. And the reason why we do this is because for what reason, Hannah? Why do we want to keep the Sabbath holy for anyway, Hannah? Because we love Jesus. That's right. We love Jesus because remember, Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 15, If, if you, you love me... me keep my commandments and this is how we show our love to Jesus by keeping his commandments because we love him because he first loved us right yes that's right because he first loved us Hannah and he died willfully on that cross for our sins so Hannah is it your desire to set aside everything that we shouldn't do during the hours of the Sabbath and allow God to help you to truly keep the Sabbath holy? Yes! That's my desire too. And we hope it's your desire as well too, friends. 
And we hope that you've been blessed by this study dealing with the construction of the wilderness sanctuary and connection with the importance and the sacredness of the Seventh-day Sabbath. And next week, we'll be continuing our Bible study on the construction of the Sabbath and the various types of items and materials used to construct it and how it relates to us and Jesus' earthly ministry. So let us pray. Father in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you so much for this study on the sanctuary and the Sabbath. Thank you, Lord, for pointing out to us the importance of the sacredness of the Sabbath, that even though the wilderness sanctuary was a sacred place and was to be built quickly so that you could have a place to dwell among your people, that it must not be done during the hours of the Sabbath. Dear Father in heaven, forgive us for the times that we've trampled upon your holy Sabbath and have mercy upon us and help us to recognize the sacredness of the Sabbath and to keep it holy because you're holy and above all else because we love you because of what you did in giving Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Bye everyone. Hope to see you on our next study. Bye-bye, everyone. God bless you.